summer is right around the corner. And here in San Diego, we are lucky enough to have sunny days almost year round. Soaking up the rays is a common pastime in America's finest city, but it can also be dangerous when unprotected. Today, we are putting the spotlight on sunlight and talking to Dr. Greg Daniels at UC San Diego Morse Cancer Center about skin cancer, the symptoms, treatment options, and how to prevent melanoma, which is on the rise in the United States. Thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Daniels. You're welcome, thank you for having me. How does skin cancer develop? Non-melanoma skin cancers like basal cells and squamous cells happen on their extremities, face, any place that we get a lot of chronic sun damage. And so chronic just means the more sun exposure we get, the higher the risk. Melanoma happens also in those areas, but on the trunk, on the legs, other places where sun doesn't shine as constantly. Uh, even where the sun often never shines um, because melanoma can happen in the uh, GI tract as well as uh, uh, uncommon melanoma that's also in the eye. What are the signs we should be looking for? One is this is a spot that just doesn't look like any place else on your body. So we call that more or less the uh, ugly duckling rule. One that's just not like the others that uh, looks bad. The other characteristic you want to look for is changing. So an area that's changing more than the rest of your body. So we all have spots, we all have lumps, but they're relatively stable, but cancer generally isn't. And so it'll continue to evolve and change. So you're looking at, at those two factors. Who is at risk for skin cancer? And if diagnosed, what are the treatment options available? Everybody at least is on the list of being at risk for skin cancer. And when they see their physician, I encourage everybody to advocate for themselves. A hundred years ago, the risk of melanoma was almost negligible, maybe one in a thousand, one in five thousand kind of, kind of incidence rates. Nowadays, it's one in thirty uh, approaching that. So in the last hundred years, there's been this dramatic increase in, in melanoma skin cancers. There's risks that are intrinsic to us, such as our susceptibility to other health problems. So if you have, say, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, that's an immune suppressed kind of state. Those patients are at increased risk for skin cancers or HIV infections. And it's certainly related to lifestyle. Whether it's tanning bed exposures or other ways that we're relating to the sun, but it's not genetic. The best way to treat it is with surgical excision. Early detection means that you have a smaller scar or Sometimes you can treat very early non-melanoma skin cancers with non-surgical techniques such as creams um, or other kind of ablative techniques. What are the best ways to protect ourselves? If you have fair skin, you're at risk for a lot of UV damage, maybe you're outdoors all the time, things like that, you want to protect yourself. Everybody has their list of different protections that they believe in. American Academy of Dermatology recommends avoiding sun between 10 and 2, wearing sun protective clothing, applying sunscreens appropriately, which is often and lots. For melanomas, it's a little more controversial as to what the best way to prevent the melanomas are. So we apply some of the same rules of non-melanoma skin cancers of um, sun moderation. Just because it's a cloudy day doesn't mean the UV is away. We're at risk for getting sunburned on, even in those conditions. What should we be looking for when purchasing sunscreen? What people should look for is something that says broad spectrum, and that implies that both UVA and UVB is being quieted. And it depends on the organization. If you're gonna wear sunscreen, probably it's a 15 to a 30 that you wanna apply. Uh, one reason why the FDA capped the labeling at 50 is at about an SPF of 50, you're blocking essentially 97, 98% of the UV that's out there. So rather than say, oh, I'm good for the day because I have an SPF of 5,000, it's, oh, it's a 50, and oh yeah, the label says every two hours to reapply it. And oh, it's not waterproof because that term doesn't exist anymore in the labeling. It should say water resistant, but also give guidelines as to how often sunscreen or sunblocks reapplied. Thank you so much for all the great information and your time today. You're very welcome, thank you. 
So whether you're hitting the beach, packing your bags for vacation, or simply enjoying Mother Nature in your own backyard this summer, remember to protect yourself from the sun. For more information about skin cancer and the comprehensive care we provide, please visit cancer.ucsd.edu.